Welcome back into the shop everyone. It has been quite a while since I've put out a video for you guys. But in this one, what I'm going to be doing is restoring this giant number 8 uh, Stanley, Bla Stanley Bailey plane. And I'm going to go through the process of de-rusting it, getting all the screws and everything tuned up and the blade sharpened. And I'm going to bring you guys along for it. So we're going to go ahead and restore this gigantic plane. And I hope you guys enjoy it. So this plane is in pretty good condition. The only thing that I've really noticed is the back handle here, or I think this is actually called the tote, is going to need to be replaced because you could see it broke off there. So what I have here is a new block of rosewood and I'll take the handle off, trace it out and cut it and we will make ourselves a brand new handle for this. So the first thing we need to do is take it all apart. something that is going to really speed this up for us and that is evapor rust. I've seen this on other uh, YouTube channels and restoration places and it seemed like a good idea to get this. It'll save me a lot of time instead of trying to use like a wire brush or something on all these parts. I just dunk it in there, leave it for a little while and it strips all of the rust off which is kind of cool. However, the one dilemma I'm going to face here is because this is such a gigantic plane, number 8, it's not actually going to fit here in this gallon. So I think I'll be able to get away with dunking half of it on one time and then half of it on the other. And I think that should cover the complete plane. So after taking a closer look here, I realized Actually, when I flip this over, there is a little bit of space here in between that isn't going to be touched at all by the evaporus. So instead, what I'm going to do here is I have a bin that I think will actually work better because the plane is going to sit in here at an angle. Alright, so here's what I came up with. I tilted the bin on its side. You can see here that this is actually covered pretty well, and then I'll be able to flip it over and do it from there. So I'll be able to resaw this block into two pieces, and then stack that on top, and then cut out the profile. And thankfully, this is actually less than half of the thickness of the block, so I should be good to go. And with that, I actually took one of the handles from one of my other planes and that way I can actually match this top profile bit here perfectly on the new handle. So I don't even have to mess around with this one. I'm basically just going to be making a mirror image of this one from one of my other planes. line from the stuff that's in the evaporust here and the stuff that's out and when I first put it in here it was actually touching here and it since it's dried but it still has been working all the way up to here so I think that's pretty cool to see that that line there eventually when I flip it around it should all even out and one thing to note here is that I am keeping track on my phone of how long it's been in here and that way when I flip it over I get the, the same amount of time. So also back here I got the, the frog 
the iron, the chip breaker, and the, the frog. I actually put the smaller screws and everything here. That way I don't have to fish them out of that big bin. handle shape here from the bandsaw. I'm gonna go ahead and use a foreign hand and a larger uh, rasp in order to get the, the exact shape that we need to match the other handle. This one has, you know, a perfect grip for your hand and it's super nice to hold. It was obviously refined over a long period of time, so I wanna match this as close as possible. With that, this handle is now no better than the original that we started with, with the broken top. I just broke this off with the with the rasp, but I think I'll be able to actually glue this back on here, and it, it won't be noticed. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue this up, let it dry, and then I'll get back to work on this. So what you saw me just do there is tighten up just this little piece of metal there. And as you saw, I just used the, the propane torch, heated it up, and then on the back of the anvil, or the back of the vise, which has an anvil, I was able to pound that, and this adjustment now is actually nice and snug, because before it was wiggly and loose. So I'm actually super happy with that. That's the first time I've ever tried something like that, and it worked out pretty well.
the idea I have is if I put the drill bit in the, the one I'm basing this off of and I put it perfectly plumb next to the one I'm going to be drilling here in the vise and that way when I actually drill down I can make sure that my drill is perfectly plumb and it should be right in line with where I need to be drilling. So I hope that works. I pretty much only have one shot at this. So I'm going to go ahead and do this really slow and uh, wish me luck. <laughs> Well that totally worked. I was able to drill that completely on my own freehand like that and you could see the holes at the very bottom lined up exactly where they should. And that's really important because on the, the plain body this where that is placed isn't adjustable at all so I'm really happy about that. That worked out exactly how I wanted it to. You could see the, the brass screw sticking out right there. That's super nice. And then this screw lined up there as well. And I think I'm just going to recess this uh, right here a little bit more. And it took a little bit of time to you know, get it right, but I'm, I'm happy with it. I'm, I'm glad I didn't you know, just do the easy route and go on eBay and just buy another handle. So the rosewood turned out nice and I'm super, super happy with this. Alright you guys, so that is going to wrap it up for this Stanley Bailey uh, plane restoration. I'm super pleased with the way this thing came out. One of the main things I want to compare here is the fact that this machine right here is the same thing that this is. And this is something I can hold in my hand, as big as it is. And this is a giant machine, but they both do the same thing. Now probably in my projects I'm going to be using this 9 times out of 10 compared to this thing. But there's just something cool about this that I wanted to I wanted to have. It took a lot of work to get all the rust off with the evaporust. And one thing I do want to mention is I did end up actually wire brushing it. But that was just to get the, the surface stuff off. I mean the evaporust did a ton of work for me and it really sped up that process. Also if you did enjoy this video go ahead and subscribe and like the video. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.